Hey everyone, welcome into the channel. Today is Monday, it is the day after Easter, and I am hitting the ground running as usual. We're gonna go up to the antique booth today. I have a few things to stock, and I'm just in that mood to like mosey around and see if there's anything good to find to flip for a profit. I'm gonna leave you with the cheesecake recipe I showed in my last video. So this is a cheesecake that I've been making for many years and it is scrumptious. I think we had a couple of pieces left and that was it, it was a big hit. So I'm gonna give you the recipe in this video. I'm also going to finally list my top 10 favorite places to thrift and to shop market whatever I know you guys have been waiting for this list and I really wanted to be careful to make sure that these are my 10 favorites and they are all right hit that like and subscribe button I'm taking you with me okay so I have just gotten to the vintage booth for those of you who don't know this is the booth that Roger and I opened in December and have really enjoyed shopping for it and selling items from it um, we don't have to be here, which is great. I love that idea. We just drop things off with prices and the people that work here um, collect the money, which is always nice. We get a check twice a month, which more than covers the rent. So our rent here is 140 together. We both pay 70 and um, we profit several hundred dollars both um, each per month, which is great. It's not a super quick mover. It's not like whatnot or something like that, that you're just turning over items super quick, but it is definitely a lot more profit than it is for the cost of it. And the great thing is it's kind of passive income. I mean, you do have to bring the items and, and you know, make sure they're clean and tag them. But that's the biggest part of the work is putting a tag with the price on it. And like I said, the people down at the front desk collect the money and we get a check twice a month, which I just collected our checks and definitely Definitely worth doing this. All right, so they have shopping carts that we fill the cart with whatever we're bringing in because we're on the third floor. And then I just put the cart in the elevator and bring it up. Here are a few items that I'm bringing in today. I did have a few more things at home, but I didn't want to get too crazy. You might have seen me pick up some of this stuff. A few things are Rogers. All right, so this is what the booth is looking like. You're probably going to remember most of seeing this in my videos, which is great. And a lot of it has sold. I don't even know how much I've sold. I should add it up from December. Well over a thousand dollars for sure. Okay, let's stop the video and figure this out. So for the four months that I've been selling, December through March, four completed months, I made $2,136.42. Now, if we minus the rent, the $70, which is my share, for the four months, that left me with a profit of $1,856.42. You divide that by the four months, and per month, I am making about $470. I call that really good profit. This is not a lot of work. So I did want to do the math quickly for you so that if you're thinking of getting a vintage booth, you can see mathematically it really works out well. And you can always see blanks in the wall where things sold. So the best tip is from the beginning, we have videoed what the booth looks like every day that we leave. Now, we don't come here a lot. I'm going to say we're here probably about once every seven to 10 days, something like that. Maybe not even that much. Um, yeah, but this is what it's looking like. I can tell something has sold there. So today I'm just going to be moving things around, pricing the few new items I brought to restock. I can see a big empty space there. I can't remember what was there, but I can always look in the last video. Here are what the shelves are looking like. And yeah, we're in good shape. Probably something missing here. Not quite sure. Every sconce set. This is for the sconce itself, but there would have been something on there. All right, the booth is looking good. I think one of Roger's jerseys has sold because he had, oh, maybe it's there. I think he had three, so one of them sold, I think. All right, so I'm going to tag this stuff and restock the booth, bring the cart downstairs, and then we'll probably do some shopping together because we love going through these booths. All right, once again, this is Old Factory Antiques, Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. So I got the price tags put on the new items coming in and switched a few things around. This is what it is looking like. 
we do really well. Well, Roger does really well with Yankee Candles. So many times we are finding these for a couple of dollars. And then he flips them for anywhere between 8 and 12. And that is a volume item. So he has sold quite a few candles. So candles we are always on the lookout for. But we always look for the unburnt ones. Um, yeah, so I will try to give you kind of an update on what things have been selling. I just picked up both invoices. Old Factory Antiques is great. They give you a printout exactly what has sold. So you just put a little description right on your tag, and then they type that in when something sells. So you know what price it brought, you know, whatever you had marked on the tag, along with the title of the item that you gave to it. All right, so we're in good shape. I do have a few more things to bring here. I think I'm gonna bring some more dishes. And um, yeah, I think some dishes sold. I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna have to look at my invoice. All right, let's take a look around and see what everybody else is selling. Okay, somehow I wound up on the second floor. There's the second floor there. And there's this little staircase here. It's only a couple of steps and it brings you on floor number two and a half. You're kind of between the second floor and the third floor. This is so cool. 30% off of everything in this booth. I really like their aesthetic. Lots of framed prints. This looks like an old Amish print. So pretty. We have a Disney clock up there. I love looking at what other vendors sell. Oh my goodness, these are adorable. McCoy pottery. Let's kiss. Now this can't be McCoy pottery, can it? I don't know what this is. McCoy pottery is down there, so I don't know what these are called. They're just little kissing, kissing people. Those are adorable. $35 each. Oh, their lips have magnets. Oh, how fun is that? I've never seen these. I saw the sign and I'm like, wait, what am I looking at? This is not McCoy pottery. But the pottery is down here, which that makes sense now. Salt and pepper shakers. Oh, these are adorable. Have you guys seen these before? Vintage, what does that say? Vintage Nodder. Buddy Lee Nodder. They're called Nodders. Ha, huh, I have never seen those. Adorable. Okay, we have some original artwork. Very heavy gold frames. so much fun just you know doing some work stocking the booth putting price tags on things and setting up the display and then getting to shop it's the best of both worlds selling and buying at the same time all right lots of crocs i see a lot of these type of crocs at auctions i don't really sell that many most times the big ones go for you know higher money than than i would be bidding all right, so let's come down the staircase now on the other side. There's an old horse ashtray. Some toys. Prince Albert in a can. <laughs> I think my grandfather on my father's side, so my father's father, I think he used to have this kind of tin around the house. I'm sure my grandmother was thrilled. I think for Roger and I, part of the fun of having a booth is seeing what's sold. Not only selling things and making money doing this, but we'll go back and look at the footage of what we filmed when the booth is finished. And then we bring home the invoice and we sit together and talk about what's sold and be like, oh, there's such and such sold. That is so fun. Oh, look at this little doll bed. Oh, that is so cute. It's a mini yo-yo quilt somebody made. Look how tiny those are. That is adorable, $23, very fun. All right, so I'm always, always on the hunt for miniature pictures. I think everybody has caught on to it. I used to find them very often and now not so much. I like the aesthetic of this booth, very white and neutral, beautiful. Look at this dark colored bowl, 950, brown crockery bowl. That is beautiful. It's got like luster wear to it. $9.50. I have to be careful with pottery because I'm kind of obsessed with pottery. And I don't want to wind up with a lot of pottery that doesn't sell. Oh, this is sweet. I love things like this. $5. It's a bird's nest. Isn't that pretty? That'd be so pretty sitting on like a, a grouping of books on a shelf. 
Okay, do I want that? I almost feel like I need that. So beautiful. A wreath. Yeah, I really like this booth a lot. Oh, here's kind of a miniature picture. Not really, but kind of. It's not small enough. Deerfield River Mohawk Trail. Seven dollars. Okay, the antique center is going to be closing probably in about half an hour. Oh, I know these yoga bunnies. I've seen these before. <laughs> I've sold the frogs before. How funny are those? Those are really cute. Twenty dollars. So some of the booths are very spread out, very curated, very, you know, just a few things placed. And then some are like a treasure trove. All kinds of good stuff in here. Lots of glassware. I see she has a granny square quilt. I don't know the owner of this booth, but every time I pass by, I feel like they do a really great job with displaying their items and just the items that they have. It's not like one thing jumps out at you, but it just gives you such a, I don't know, like a really nice feeling to look at their items. Okay, so this is adorable. It is an original painting of two little birds sitting on a reed. $10. Isn't that sweet? It's an original painting. We're definitely taking that. I absolutely love this. The frame is beautiful. Just the whole thing. Look how talented this person is. So I would say this falls into the miniature category. It's kind of on the edge because the miniatures are really small. Here's a grouping of owls. We might have seen these before. Trio, cast metal owls. Okay, $20. I think that's about what they should be. What else do we see? I do like that bird print, but I'm trying not to buy big art. I also, let's just put down our bird, our bird painting here. I also like this plate. Did I look at this last time, guys? I don't remember. $38.00 antiques beautiful yellowware wall plate so pretty all right let's not forget our painting all right and my mind is going back to that silly um faux floral nest and eggs i almost want to run back and get that before they close what is this antique redware oval dish floral slip design it's kind of pretty too All right, so they're gonna be closing in like 15 minutes. So I gotta put a shake on this. I got here a little bit later than I planned because I was listing and just doing bills and business. Always oh, lots of business. It's the unfun part of running a business. Wow, look at that mirror. All right, they have a radio playing quite loud. So I'm gonna to have to chit chat a little bit. Oh, here's a mirror, $15. Looks to be plastic. I think it is plastic. That's a shame because if that was carved wood, I would have grabbed that in a minute. In a hot New York minute. Okay. Let's see what else is up here. $12. This is another booth on the third floor that I've brought you to before. And I thought this was hysterical. At first, I thought it was ugly face pottery. But they're saying it's an egg separator. So I guess you crack the egg and put it in there. And the yolk stays in. <laughs> And the clear part of the egg, the white runs out his nose. That is just so funny. I have never seen that before. I think they're asking $20. Let me just put my picture down here, make sure it doesn't fall. Have you guys ever seen this? What will people think of? Egg separator, ceramic, $20. That is just wild. Okay, this is a lovely color. I think I have expensive taste. B17. I don't know who's making B17. That is a beautiful color. Two-handled pot. $20. Again, I have to be careful of my buy-in price. This is lovely. Not sure what that's saying. It's in a different language. $6. What does that say? It says something. Italy. A little Italian pot. Oh, I do like that. I have a lot of ceramic right now. Sometimes ceramic in my eBay store sells through so quickly, and other times it takes a while. It does always sell through. Some pieces, you know, just go really quick, and then, like I said, other times I have pieces for a while. But pottery, for me, generally, is a very good seller. All right, lots of beautiful things. 
I do like those set of Turkish appetizer dishes, but I think they're supposed to have a bigger dish in the middle. That would be my guess. Isn't that pretty, though? I love things that are painted like that. They look to be hand-painted. It's a shame it doesn't have its middle dish. All right, we're not finding a lot today, but this is so enjoyable. You would think I would be so tired of this kind of shopping. I could do this kind of shopping all day. Roger's the same way. Right now, he is thrifting. We are in two different places at once. We don't get to spend every day shopping together. I think he went over to Goodwill. He's trying to pick up quite a bit of clothing Roger buys probably, I'm going to guess, two to 300 pieces of clothing every week. And, um, and he just is on it, listing it. He's still running auctions. Okay, this is a booth that we've been in before. It's very tight. And this is the booth, I believe, that I missed the bowling sweater. So I was here one day, and I saw a customer go by that had a bowling sweater on. He actually put it on, and I was like, oh, that sweater is everything. He said, I just found it in that booth. I think he pointed to this booth, and I couldn't believe I missed it because that would have went for, I don't know, over $200. Happy for him, but sad for me. All right, I think we are almost done. Here is the red booth, the painted booth that I showed you last time. Wow, that is unique. 125. I have never seen something like that. The middle pane is painted. I don't know if that that must be original. Wow, that is something vintage mirror with painting on canvas, 125. I'm almost thinking the middle used to be a pane of glass. It used to be a mirror. I don't know. I'm just guessing at that. Got some little pups here. Wow, very big gold candlesticks. A gorgeous mirror, 125. So for those of you asking, Roger did list the church candlesticks and the wall sconces. I believe he has both of them in his store. Anytime you're looking for anything, you know, that you see us purchase, know that it, sometimes it takes a while for us to get it listed because we're not only, you know, shopping every day and listing constantly. It is just um, a lot of work. So sometimes it takes a while. Like this is going to take me probably, I'm going to say at least a week to 10 days to get into my store um, with all of the filming I do. Look at this little painting. Is that a print? That's a pr Oh no, that is this? I can't tell what this is. I feel like that's a, yeah, that's a print. Scenic painting, $12. That's a shame. But it looks like Robert Woods. I think that's what that says. Um, it looks like he signed it, but I'm pretty sure that's a print. Okay, so we are in good shape. I'm just about to head out. It was a very fun day. <laughs> a dangly leg pumpkin, I'm guessing. Peach? I'm not quite sure what he's supposed to be. Oh my word, it's so odd. What is it made out of? Just a resin. That is so funny. Four dollars. They're saying it's an orange. I think an orange. <laughs> okay, I could just spend hours in this place. Hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours. All right, so it is the next day. It is Tuesday morning. Roger and I are heading over to Goodwill 30. As usual, it is pouring out. It has been raining cats and dogs. Why do people even say that? Why do people say that? I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> But it is just starting to flood the streets, so hopefully, we know what that means, hopefully Goodwill is not crowded. Everything's all about the thrifting, always. I always look at the weather, the size of the parking lot, how many cars are in the lot, whether we're hearing the back doors open. It's all these little, little hints of how the shopping is going to be. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, Railroad go. tracks. I know, we're going. <laughs> Hit that like and subscribe button. We're taking you with us. Sometimes I get the feeling that Goodwill employees put these things out just to entertain me. They have them in the back and they're like, oh, Lavender Clothesline is here. Let's put the pigs out. <laughs> Dancing pigs. $2.99. It's plastic. But it does make you smile. At least somebody's having fun in life. <laughs> we have been working a ton, but it's all good. 
I see some pigs back there we saw last time. All right. Lots of tchotchka. Tchotchki, tchotchka, tomato, tomato. It's all the same. All right. I'm gonna squat down and see if there's anything on the bottom shelf. Ooh. Ooh, no. Cherished teddies. Definitely not. What is this box? Cat sensor. Oh, the cat has to dig his treats out. Well, that's just mean. <laughs> Here's some owls. What is going on? Oh, I thought that was all one thing. All one figurine. Oh, it's a mama owl. That's just a little creepy. Look at that face. With a baby owl? That is so funny. Mother's first barn, born, <laughs> barn. Oh, this is kind of pretty. It's Christmassy, but I do like that. Why do I like that? Yeah, that just has a very vintage wrapping paper look, doesn't it? If that was around Christmas time, I'd probably pick that up. No, I know I do list Christmas all year long, but this is not gonna bring much and this would be a booth item. So for the booth, I don't pick up Christmas all year because then I'd have to store it, you know, in the house until it was time to go to the booth. And I really don't want to do that because right now we have furniture in the house getting ready to list the tables. I bought at auction, put those on Facebook Marketplace. I think I've shown that to you guys. All right, so later in this video, I'm going to give you my top 10 shopping places. I will put them down on a list. If I have time, I'll talk about why I like them. If not, you're just going to have to trust me. And not seeing anything. It's nice that they grouped like the religious figures together. That's a shame that she has chipping. She's older, definitely. Ah, oh, I would have picked her up. I do like her. Look at the expression in the eyes. That's not a bad painting job. Okay, a little, a little rug for a dollhouse, I'm gonna say. I think it's like a chair doily, maybe, where somebody's head would go or their elbow. Back in the day, everybody was very conscientious of not getting their hair grease on the furniture. Ooh, this is a hat. Wow. <laughs> what is that, the 60s or the 70s? I'm not quite sure. Okay, a few more items, some black bears. Fresh linen sea salt. I wonder if he was part of that other, that other figurine. I should put them together. I'm not quite sure they go together. Saint Martha, I don't know who Saint Martha, oh, Mary and Martha, silly me. She does have a crack. This is interesting, lots of breakage though. Oh, that is a real shame. I bet you this would do well. Carved out of wood, two ninety nine. But her, her halo. I'm not sure what to call that. It's got quite a bit of breaking in it. Oh, we got a glasses case back here. Oh, there's glasses in them. I think I shake every glasses case I see. All right, made in China. Just little bifocals. When I look for glasses, it's not for the prescription lenses, it's for the frames. So if the frames are branded with a really good brand or a vintage brand, I go ahead and pick them up and sell them with the lenses in them. And people bring them to their optometrist or ophthalmologist and get them changed out. Oh, it's a little owl cup. I think that's chalkware. I'm not quite sure. Looks like he was used as a planter. That would be cute on a desk with an air plant. It looks like wood, but I don't think that's wood. Could be, not sure. Oh, this owl is making me very tired. <laughs> Sleepy owl. All right, we have some vintage pigs that are a planter. Looks like just a mold. Okay, those are almost cute, but not quite cute enough. So you know how I always talk about the really weird things that you find in Goodwill? 
hot chocolate goat milk lotion <laughs> from the Bates family farm. I, somehow that's just wrong. I guess it is goat milk lotion, which is fine. I like goat milk, but the hot chocolate, it makes it sound like the hot chocolate comes out of the goat. <laughs> that is just so strange. Now watch, it turns out it's really good goat milk lotion. I like goat milk soap too, but I can't picture the hot chocolate. Why do they put the big items on the top shelf? <sighs> All right, this is a very nice luminary. People love these to put on their patios outside. I don't know that people burn candles in them in the house. I guess they could. This one is really nice. It's all constructed of wood and like this metal lace work or fret work. I gotta look up fret work. I use that term a lot and I'm not even sure what that means. This is in really nice condition if I can get this down without killing myself. Okay, so it's in great shape and I am looking for the price tag. $6.99, that's not bad. I will most likely put this item in the booth and probably charge, I'm gonna say 24 for it. I don't see any breaks on it, so that is great. And a sticker on the bottom said it originally sold for $50. Very heavy and well-made, so this is a great find. Okay, so a few things came out when you weren't looking. We got a leather wine bottle. I don't think this will bring a lot of money, but I have sold these before. Some of them are slower sellers and I still haven't figured it out. I think it just goes on coolness, the level of coolness. This is Don Quixote de la Mancha, of the Mancha. I have no idea. And it says Vino on it. So for, what am I paying for this? I just saw a price tag, $2.99. This is real leather that covers this bottle. That must be a lot of work, but we took that what else did we get? We got one brass votive candle wall thing. I don't know about this. I think I need two for this. $2.99. So I don't think this is going to bring more than maybe $10. I'm probably going to put this back. You know what? I probably will put it back. And we could place it right there because this is all like mixed stuff. All right, what else? A monkey pod dish. I don't pick them all up. I do like this one because it has three compartments and $2.99. I think this is monkey pod. This might be olive wood or rosewood. I'm not sure, but I like this leaf shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. I found this. This is really interesting. This is a box of incense, fragrance of the redwoods. And I thought it was really cool because on the bottom, it says it's 1953. So when I opened it up, let's see if I can get this box open with one hand. Okay, clearly I couldn't, I had to use two hands. It even has the little matches in it and the glass um, dish to set up the little piece of incense and it burns there. And what does that say on there? It says campfire memories. How cool is that? 1953, that is ancient for sure. I wasn't even born yet, amazing. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that. I didn't find any comps on this, 2.99. I think cause most people burnt their incense, but I wonder if it still smells like the redwoods, I'm not quite sure. All right, I grabbed this glass little trinket dish, 2.99. I'm on the fence about this truthfully. I don't think this is all that great. It caught my attention because it's pretty. I wish it was bigger. So yeah, I might be putting this back. I'm on the fence. I'll see about that. All right, so this is the interesting find. I'm not gonna get all of them, but I took all of them to show them to you guys. Vintage hats. I love vintage hats. And usually in my title, I will put things like um, theater or props um, because I think in the movies, you know, when they make an older movie, they need authentic costumes. It's easier for them to buy something like this than to, you know, remake all of the hats. $4.99 a hat. So I'm not quite sure which ones I'm gonna pick up. A little lace netting. This always reminds me of like Betty Davis. And I'm not sure of the time period. Now this style is cheaply made. It has its hat pins there not very high quality so this is probably going back it almost reminds me of a robin hood hat so um and this one has staining so that one's definitely going back this one i'm definitely keeping this is a genuine fur pillbox beautiful if i had to guess i'm thinking mink 
beautiful condition and it is labeled. It's always helpful and more valuable when they are labeled, especially with a good label, Saks Fifth Avenue, $4.99, beautiful condition. So that is a keeper. Here is a black one, a little bit nicer made than the green one. And look at these tasseled pom-pom things. They're almost made to look like feathers. Can you just see the person wearing this? I can. So this is Arlette, Chapeau Arlette, Santa Fe. Very cool, $5, that's a keeper. Uh, a little black one, I'm gonna look this one up. Eli made this, and just a little black one. This is probably gonna go back. And one not as old is this hat, but this is Angora. So it's Angora wool nylon. It's made in China, but I'm gonna look this one up. I think people would like an Angora hat. All right, so this is a definite maybe. This is a yes. This is a yes. I think the black one I'll put back. So probably these three going back and I'm keeping these three. I did find this little hands dish on the shelf. This did not come out in a new cart. Kind of interesting. I would have liked this better if it was metal and it was vintage. That would be really good. But for $2.99, I think this is a cute um, booth item. Back in the day when you went into a store, there was change in these or books of matches. And I think it's just really a nice sign of hospitality and open hand. The person who made it did a good job painting it. So that's kind of cool. And last item are these rhinestone photo frames. These are newer you know, contemporary, Tahari home. The quality is there. And I am just carefully checking that I'm not missing rhinestones because I don't have time for gluing in replacement rhinestones. So two that are matching, it's always better selling a pair of something in my opinion, $3 each. So for $6, I'll probably turn these into 22, 24, something like that. Really nice condition. All right, so that's what's in the cart so far. Let me not crush my mink hat. All right, let's keep going. I got excited for half a second. <laughs> it says France here. And then it said Saint Dalfour, Dalfour, France. And I'm like, oh, I don't know that name. Who's making this? Oh, there's the telltale sign. So they're just little, little dishes, probably prep dishes or something like that, little herb dishes that say France, but they're made in China. So that's not good. Okay, isn't this a pretty pattern? I like this pattern with the gold trim and the daisies. I think I like it because the gold trim is all very fancy and formal. And then the daisies are like every day. So it's your fancy wear for every day. Who's making this? This is Taylor Smith. Okay. I don't think I've ever seen that pattern before. Yesterday when I went to the booth, I was trying to figure out what had sold on the bottom shelf. And I think it was the uh, Limoges dishes that I had. So um, I have to go back and look at the footage. I haven't had time to do that, but if the Limoges dish is finally sold, that'll be a great thing. And I will be bringing the Desert Rose dishes in. So I try not to keep more than one or two sets of dishes in the booth at the same time because it just gets to be too much. Oh, this is a pretty plate. That's a very pretty pattern. It's not pretty. Who's making this? Malvern. Royal... Grafton, fine bone china made in England. That is beautiful. Oops, got a big scratch or a crack. I think it's cracked. Beautiful. So when you've been here for a while, everybody becomes friends and we all trade stuff with each other. I think I've shared that with you before. So I wound up offering the large basket I had in the cart to somebody else. And one of my friends offered me this bowl. Now, it's not signed, let me say that. My first thing is I get very excited when I turn a wood bowl over and it's signed by the artist and the artist is local here in Pennsylvania. Nothing thrills me more. This one is carved with like a, a small tool. I think this is for the souvenir trade. That would be a total guess. It is from one piece of wood, which is really nice. I always like to see wood objects made from one block of wood. So somebody had a tree trunk, a tree branch, and they made this bowl. 
For $4.99, I will go ahead and pick this up and again, put it in the booth. I don't know that this is going to be a super fast seller. To me, it has more of an ethnic or a boho look rather than a country or a farmhouse look. But either way, I think it's a good pickup. So thank you, Doris. I love the bowl. All right, I'm going to take a quick look at clear glass for all my glass people out there. I do try to do this periodically so you don't think I've forgotten you. I haven't forgotten you. Just because I still don't like clear glass doesn't mean I shouldn't be looking at it because I know many of you enjoy shopping along with me. Don't see anything yet. The green is pretty. I think it's just a modern contemporary glass, but a little juice glass. This looks to be a tiki tumbler. Oh, and it is quite heavy. That's neat. I guess this is a beer. What are you doing by? Oh, you're putting Put pretzels in. <laughs> no, 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 no. Roger and I are eating snacks. Hers, peanut butter filled pretzels. All right, a tiki glass tumbler. I would imagine this was sold in a restaurant maybe. Up oh, there we go. Crush. Oh, TJ Rockwell's. Can I call it or what? That is kind of cool. But I don't think TJ Rockwell's glasses would bring, like, you know, enough money to make me rich. I'm not happy with that sitting like that. Let's put that back there. All right. This is pretty. Oh, it's a little bit sharp in the hand. I'm not saying it's cut glass, but that does feel sharper than a pressed glass. That is pretty. Are there more of these? What would we use these for? What was the original intended use for that? Like a dip or I don't know. I have no idea. But if there's more of those, I might get those and just research them. So keep your eyes open. Here's another um, little piece of glass that looks the same. Nope, that one's not as sharp. Okay. We're going to move a little bit quicker because I'm not seeing anything of note. I think when glass is colored, like a true colored glass, it's easier for me to identify. All of this clear is just my eye doesn't really rest on anything. Okay, so this is Moon and Stars. Now I'm just going to say words. <laughs> L.E. Smith, Moon and Stars. How's that? Do I get any points for making it sound like I know what I'm talking about. Okay, nothing there. Well, there's an ice bucket down there. That's not clear glass. What is this little tea bag holder? It's kind of cute. Looks like a fish. It is a fish, a fish dish. All right, guys, I don't see anything of note on this aisle. So I'm gonna just keep moving along, but I just wanted to share for those of you who love clear glass. All right, so I'm keeping this real. I have three things going on in my head at the same time. First, I see this basket for $2.99, and I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. I think this is bittersweet, like kind of like grapevine, one of those. That is beautiful. So right away, my mind says, definite yes, I don't even question this. It just goes in my cart. So if that is how I buy most of the time, that I don't even question the thing, I just know it. Why am I going back and forth, back and forth about this bowl? You know me, I love wood. I love wood bowls, but for some reason, I'm just feeling this has too much of a tribal look, which tribal art is beautiful. But I don't know in this area to sell in the booth if enough people would want a bowl that looks like this. I would have to sell this for at least 15 for the space it's going to take up in the booth. It's not about the work. There's no work involved. I just stick a sticker on it and put it in the booth. But this takes up a lot of room. So when I go back and forth too many times, I've learned to put the thing back because when something's good, you put it right in your cart and you don't even question it. All right, here's another example of really good. So the same woman that had offered me the bowl offered me this. This is one of those leather tripod seats. I don't know the official name. I have sold this quite a few times. And the last one I think I got $45 for. So see, when I see this, this is an absolute yes, especially for $7. I don't even question it. It goes right in my cart. 
All right, so that is just keeping it real, my thinking process, which sometimes is a little scary, but now I feel like this is correct. All right, let's keep going. So a new cart came out and it didn't really look like there was anything of note. It was like really a lot of junk, but I did spot this bag of paintbrushes. And when I quickly looked at the paintbrushes, I started to notice that some of them were made in USA. Some of them were made in England. Um, here's the USA here. All different countries. It's not just made in China. Now, there are a few made in China. Like, see this black one? Made in Japan. So, a whole bag of paintbrushes, I think, is a good deal for $2.99. I'm going to go ahead and pick these up. I think a few of them are vintage and made out of, like, sable or different natural hairs. I could be wrong about all of that. I don't think I am. So, I'm going to go with this. That's what makes me buy this is that they have different countries and a lot of them are United States on them rather than just, you know, acrylic brushes that are made in China. Also, I found this pair of glasses. I'm pretty sure these are a prescription. Ralph Lauren made in Italy for $1.99. I'm going to go ahead and grab these two and put these in my cart. Feeling good about both of these purchases. I thought you guys would appreciate this. Roger and I are standing here at the end of this end cap talking about something totally different. And my mind is saying, what is that? And it is a skull with a top hat cane. So when I went to pick it up, I thought for sure this was gonna be hollow and plastic. It's heavy, it's a real cane. Look at the foot of it. It's a skull foot. This has the weight of a real cane, $4.99. Do I want a skull cane that's really a real cane? Of course I do. Who makes this stuff? And who's going to walk around with a skull top hat cane? I'm not quite sure. But I feel like I need to put this in my cart. Didn't even think about it twice. All right, this is the ending cart. Sorry, I can't always show everything on the shelves. It's real life. I picked up this birdhouse. This is $3.99, just a little wooden hand-painted birdhouse. I thought this was really sweet. And what else did you not see? I think you saw everything else. Oh, a coach um, scarf. Now, I haven't been doing clothing, so that's what the story is there. If I decide to go out and clothing shop one day, of course, I'll take you guys with me. I have an Italian leather handbag that needs a very good cleaning. This I was on the fence getting because there's a lot of, like... I'm just gonna call it dirt. There's dirt around the opening of it. But the inside bottom of the lining is clean, like there's no big makeup spills. So I think I'm gonna take a toothbrush with a little bit of like shout or like a spray and wash and try to clean this up. This is a beautiful brand. I don't find this brand often. I'm gonna try to say the name. I think it's Maurizio Tatui. Tattooey. I don't know. Genuine leather made in Italy. This little bag should bring about $35 if I can get it cleaned up, but I feel like I want to save this one. It's too beautiful to let this one go to the landfill. And yep, a lot of this stuff that doesn't sell goes to the landfill. I've heard it from management. All right, so that is the cart for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Hit that like and subscribe button and stay tuned for my top 10 list. These are going to be the places that I love to shop the best. All right, thanks so much for watching. Go out and get what's yours. All right, so here I'm going to do a little tutorial just to help you guys out for anybody that does try to bake the cheesecake who might not have ever baked a cheesecake before. It can seem daunting, but once you get the hang of it, this is a really easy cake to make. And like I said, it always impresses and it always comes out so good. All right, so I'm just gonna go through the steps with you. I did hand write the recipe because I couldn't find out how to open a document. My computer has changed everything around. <laughs> All right, let's get started. So I gave you the ingredients list on here. It does take quite a bit of sour cream, cream cheese, and butter. So if you're counting calories, this is not the cake for you. But like I said, this cake is really good. Okay, so you need a spring form pan. This is my pan. You can see there's chocolate cocoa powder or something on it. This pan comes apart. That's why it's called a spring form. And this is, I believe, the nine and a half inch by three inches high. 
high. Cheesecakes are high. They are a big batter. So you don't want to try to use a regular cake pan. It will not work. All right. It is also cooked in a water bath. So what that means is once this cake batter is prepared, you're setting this in a deeper baking dish and filling that dish with hot water halfway up the sides of the pan. I hope all of that makes sense. This is not the actual pan I use, but I did take it out of my um, cupboard just to show you quickly. See, this one won't fit. Your cake pan, spring form pan, has to fit in your baking pan because you're going to be putting water in here. And, um, and the water is what creates steam in the oven and keeps the cheesecake really creamy. All right. Also preparing your pan, you're going to grease the pan with butter fairly liberally. And I have that in the um, instructions. Then you're going to wrap this greased pan with sheets of tin foil up to the side. So you don't want the tin foil to hang into the batter, of course. And you're going to use two sheets. The whole reason for the sheets of tin foil is that in case your spring form pan has a leak, the water doesn't get into the batter. My cakes have never had water go in them, but I always do this tin foil trick. And like I said, you're really wrapping this completely around the cake and, and kind of pressing it in and forming it so the cake pan doesn't have any kind of water seepage. All right, so that is the prepared pan. It is buttered and lined or outside lined with two sheets of tin foil. All right, next we're gonna go over the ingredients and preheating the oven. Oven definitely has to be preheated. You cannot put this batter into a cold oven that is preheating. It's very scientific to get this cheesecake to form, but like I said, it's quite easy. All right, so you have your butter prepared pan. Next, you're gonna use a ready-made pie crust. I have used loose pie crumbs. It didn't come out as good. Now I have just a giant brand pie crust. The best one to use is the dark Oreo one, the one put out by Nabisco. You're opening this up and just inverting this into the pan so the pie crust falls in the pan. And then you're just using a spoon, just a regular tablespoon to press it into the bottom of the greased pan. The crust does not come up the sides really it might just you know come up like a quarter of an inch but the whole premise is to put this pie crust into this pan it's very easy to do and that gives you a really nice cookie crumb crust to complement the cheesecake all right here are the ingredients that you're allowing to sit at room temperature at least two hours. You really want those ingredients to become softened and room temperature. You don't want to use cream cheese straight out of the refrigerator. It'll cause lumps. So here are the ingredients. One and a half cups of white sugar, five eggs. I use a large size egg, four bars or blocks of cream cheese. I always use Philly one pound of sour cream. I'm going to say Breakstone is my favorite sour cream, but you can use any sour cream you like. Two tablespoons of cornstarch, one pound of sweet butter, that is a stick of butter, one and a quarter teaspoons vanilla extract, one teaspoon lemon juice. I use fresh lemons. I've never tried a bottled um, lemon juice, but I'm sure it would be fine. Okay, so after buttering the pan, you inverted your cookie crust, and now you have your pan wrapped with tin foil with the crust in it. I hope all of that is clear. All right, so after you allow your ingredients to come to room temperature, you are following the mixing ingredients. I use my KitchenAid stand mixer, but you can do this with hand, you know, a hand beater. All right, once you've prepared the batter, you take your pan that is lined with foil. I'm not going to ruin my sheets of foil by doing that. And you're placing this into your water bath pan. You then pour your batter into the pan. And once that's all ready to go, you are using very hot water. I actually use my tea kettle and you're filling this outside pan a halfway up. That way you have your um, water bath all ready to go and your pan is already in 
this deeper pan. I, I know that sounds confusing. Once that's all ready, you're placing this into the oven. Some people put this pan empty on the oven rack. They place their battered, um, you know, their filled, prepared, cake battered pan into this empty, and then they pour the water on the outside um, when it's on the rack. That way you're not trying to lift this outside baking pan, you know, sloshing it with hot water. I feel like I'm not explaining this well, but I've got to keep going. All right. Once you bake that, you're baking it for one hour to one hour and 15 minutes. You want the top of that cake to be a golden brown. If you peek in the oven after one hour and it's not golden brown, I always cook it an extra 15 minutes. More likely than not, as long as your oven is true to temperature, this is going to take an hour and 15 minutes. Once the cake is golden brown on the top, it's still going to look jiggly. It's not going to look like a set cake. There's going to be movement. Now, it's not going to be a wet batter, but it's almost going to be like a, like a wiggle to it. I don't like a custard. Then you're turning your oven off, but you're leaving the cake in the oven for an additional one hour with the door ajar. So I leave my oven like probably a couple of inches. You're cooling the cake slowly so the cheesecake doesn't crack. That is the whole premise of cooling the cake slowly. You don't want that cheesecake to crack. Once you let it cool for one hour with the door ajar, you're on to page number four. We're almost home free. Then you're taking the cake out of the oven, out of the water bath, and you're cooling it on a rack on the counter for two hours. Cooling it slowly is key to having this cake just look gorgeous. After the two hours, you can then put this in the refrigerator. Mine will still have the foil wrapped around it, and I chill it for six hours. At that point, you can take the cake out of the refrigerator. You can take your foil off. Most likely, this foil will have discolored because of the water in contact with it. And, um, and then your cake is chilled enough to take the sides of the pan off. Some people remove the bottom of the pan at that point. I always serve it right on this bottom um, piece. And at that point, once the sides of the pan are off, I top it with either blueberry pie filling. Um, oh, I've done so many different flavors, strawberry cherries. Cherries are one of my favorite and it just comes out so creamy and so delicious. So if you have any questions, leave them in the chat below. You guys can answer each other's questions. I hope that's helpful. It does seem kind of daunting the first time you do it, but then after you do this once or twice, you can do this in your sleep. It's just one of those cakes that have a lot of steps, but all the steps are easy. I'm going to leave you with this last tip when you mix in your ingredients, you're really wanting to do a thorough mixing after each ingredient so that the cake doesn't have any lumps in it or any spots of like unmixed cream cheese or whatever. I hope this comes out wonderful for you. This is going to be a prize of any dinner. People love this cake. And um, my mother-in-law years ago, when I was married, my mother-in-law um, tells the story of how she got this recipe. So my mother-in-law had eight children and with a family of 10 people, they very rarely got invited to anybody's house for dinner. I mean, what family is going to have another family over with 10 people? So they didn't go out to dinner a lot because of, you know, the expense of raising such a big family. But one year for their wedding anniversary, my father-in-law did take my mother-in-law out to a beautiful restaurant in Manhattan. I wish I knew which restaurant this was, but I don't know if it was Waldorf or what it was. And for dessert, she had the cheesecake. She had never had cheesecake like this, and she loved it so much she asked the chef for the recipe. You know, she asked the waiter, and the waiter, you know, 
apologize and said, I'm sorry, we don't share our recipes. And she said, oh, I'll probably never get out to dinner again. I have eight children. Well, without her knowing, the waiter told that to the chef, the head chef, he did come out to the table. The chef actually came out to their table and gave her the recipe. Now, I'm not saying this is a secret recipe, but she was so thrilled. She made this cake for over 50 years for every family event, you know, that the family came to. And um, all us girls have the recipe. I'm sure, again, it's not a secret recipe, but this is the recipe our family used. All right. Hope that is helpful. Sorry I didn't include all of this in the other video. I think I inserted a screenshot of that cake. I'm sorry I didn't show it with the cherries. It got eaten very quickly. And um, I'll try to look back in my photo history on my phone to see if I have any pictures of this cake. I have made this cake different flavors, swirling in chocolate. I have topped it with chocolate chips, all different kinds of toppings. And I hope you guys love it too. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours. All right, guys, here's the top 10 list of my favorite places to thrift and shop for resale. As I promised, I was going to make a list of the all-time favorite places that I go to here in Pennsylvania. So there's no particular order here, but I did include the addresses if you want to Google and see what the stores look like. These are thrift stores, but they are also auction houses and flea markets. So here is the top 10 list. I hope you get to visit and I hope you find wonderful things. All right, hit that like and subscribe button. And as always, go out and get what's yours.